welcome to the first weekly Buffalo Game Space podcast. Uh, I'm John Futcher here with Greg Giles and Anthony Pismaroff to discuss a few games that people have been talking about for a while that are new to some of us and some of us haven't played them. Um, so in the interest of game design and understanding what's out there, um, we want to kind of discuss a few games that you may have heard of. Uh, the Swapper, Thomas Was Alone, and the new incarnation of Tomb Raider, to be specific. Um, I guess before we kind of get going, we'll just do a quick round of intros again and say hi. Who you are. I'm Greg. I'm a game designer. I'm Anthony. I'm an artist. Well, that was very succinct. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very... You keep things moving very along. You guys have just amazingly in-depth CVs of... Yeah. That's two it. words. <laughs> I'm still in so much training that I don't feel Wait, like would you I say can... you're a designer? Yeah, because I don't feel like I can just claim one yet. I haven't seen you design anything. anything. <laughs> uh, well, you do it no good design if you saw it, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've seen you guys do a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, being worried about, like, the labels you're giving yourselves is probably the last thing you need to be worried about right yeah. now. So between the three of us, none of us have actually played all three games. No. Which is good, I think, because it allows us to kind of explain what we're talking about right. as we go through That's it. probably We're going to be relying on the people who have played the game to explain it to the other folks and kind of talk to, like, right. what's good and what's bad about it and try to get input on, yeah. you know, things that might be, we might be able to integrate into our own projects or try to avoid, potentially. So, so I've played The Swapper and Thomas Was Alone. I played, played. Yeah, I played uh, The Swapper and Tomb Raider. And I've seen... <laughs> pretty much the entire run of Tomb Raider, and I'm familiar with the other two in concept and the sense that I've, I've seen and talked to some of the people involved with Thomas Was Alone at one point, but I've not, I don't know anything about everything that's in it. So, I well, guess let's just roll, let's start with the swapper. Yeah. Um, what is it? How does it work? Um, I guess you would call it a puzzle platformer. Um but it's, it's very, like, slow-paced, uh, very atmospheric. Um, and, yeah, it, it relies a lot on tone as much as it does mechanics, but um, neither of those things I feel like try to... Tr I feel like they're very well distributed uh, between those, you know, the different... I would, I would not call it a platformer. Just no? Just because it doesn't... Like, it has platforming mechanics, but yeah. it is... It's not really required. It doesn't test you in any way. The that platform is not. Really does. Yeah, it's I just mean, the platform is definitely. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying it's more a platformer in the sense that it's 2D side scrolling. Right. That's it. It never never challenges you in how you have to you know, move your hands. Yeah, it's not like Mario where right. it's like jumping yeah. puzzles and it's really more about like execution than figuring out what you're supposed to do. Right. It's completely about figuring out what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to do it. Um, it's never about you know timing that jump or anything like that. Well, uh, let's let's spin it back real, real quick then, because you kind of went right into like tone and mechanics. So yeah. uh, before we kind of delve into that, like explain what what do you mean by that? Like what's the tone of the game? Let's say it's somber, moody, kind of mysterious. Yeah, um, definitely mysterious. And I guess talk talk about the setting a little bit. Like I, I understand it's a sci-fi game. Right. I guess yeah, you could probably it's, it's, the well, art's a big part of it, and you yeah. could probably explain that a lot better than I could. Do you, do you want us to spoil it for you? I think <laughs> we're gonna have. Did you yeah. ever beat it? I didn't finish it. No. Um, well, if we're gonna be on the podcast and talk about it, I'm gonna have to fucking spoil it. What am I? <laughs> hey, you can spoil it. I don't care. I'll finish it either way. Uh, Spoilers. Yeah. So you start in a space station. You seem to be by yourself. Um, does it crash in the beginning? Is that what happened? Yeah, you did, are, you were yeah. ejected from like another uh, station. station or something, right. and then you crash into this one. Yeah, this you really have no station. Yeah, you don't know who you are either. It never really says anything. You just yeah. you're just kind of a player. <laughs> yeah, there's very little like prologue, like just a shot of a guy flailing his arms inside a capsule, and that guy is you, and then like it cuts right. to basically you crashing, and the game right. starts. Yeah, which so, is great. I think somebody launched you out. Launched I don't remember. There, right? I don't remember. Um, I would assume so. Because, yeah. yeah, the guy doesn't look like he's going very willingly. So No, no, he doesn't look like he's going very willingly at all. So I think that sets up the premise in a, in a way that, like, you're kind of going somewhere you might not want to be. Yeah. In the way, like, you know, he's flailing around. He's getting sent off in this rocket ship. You don't really know where he goes either. They don't really explain that. Um, 
you know you're on a station, but it doesn't ever really say where or what's going on. Which is great. I hate when games try to explain your whole history before you start. It doesn't matter. Like, you don't need amnesia or any of that. You're just a guy standing in a place. Like, that's totally enough most of the time. And this game kind of gets that, like... There's only, you know, they basically tell you uh, you were in a bad situation and you've crash landed here and that's all you get. And that's all you need. You don't yeah. need to know, like, about the guy's training or his parents were killed and stuff right. like that. It just lets you play right away. It's right, awesome. exactly. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but the biggest part of it to me is the art, um, which is all done in clay, is it? I know everything's handcrafted. I'm not necessarily sure if it's clay. Yeah, and you can tell, but it's not so obvious. That handcrafted it's not, it's not, with it's actual like, So this is clay fighter in space then? It's, not clay <laughs> it's basically clay fighter in Ichabod space. Ichabod clay going <laughs> and throwing some uppercuts with pumpkins and stuff? Everything's space. handcrafted out of actual objects, so yeah. everything's... Definitely in and that then sense, so. processed a lot, and there's definitely assembled, you know, in engine, and, and definitely yeah. there's a lot of, like... I guess you would say filters laid over all, everything to kind of unify it, but it's also very clearly like handcrafted. Um, it gives it like a grittiness to, to the tone because everything's handcrafted. Like everything has the sense of, you know, real believable texture. Which yeah. I think maybe it doesn't look um, it looks, hyper realistic. No, but not it's, at but, all. But like it is on one hand. But right? it looks a little janky to me, but like yeah. in an endearing way. Like right. it makes me sort of feel like it's just more earnest than, you know, shitty. <laughs> right. Right. So it, it feels real, which is interesting. Yeah, but it it's does. not like trying to convince you like this is a space station, this is like where the key panels would be. It's not set up yeah, like yeah, no. like a realistic space station would be. But it's it's pretty minimalist in a lot of ways. Right. Actually, yeah. In the in the strictly in the design ways. Like yeah, yeah like Anthony said, like you'll just There'll just be a freestanding terminal with no real explanation, and you 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 just start using it. You know, right, and they're everywhere. And there's you like, never question it. Yeah, you really don't. I actually hadn't even thought about that till right <laughs> yeah, now. Right? You said it. Yeah. Nothing makes sense. The layout of that ship is a disaster. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah. This is the worst design ship ever. Yeah. So nothing actually like there's no levels of the ship that like look like it would be a functional thing at all. It really just is all mm, to serve really, the gameplay. No, no I mean, not really. Everything it's exists to serve the gameplay. It's very aesthetic. Yeah, and, yeah. To, yeah. But the big Making the big sense. deal about it, what makes it really interesting and kind of takes everything to the next level, is the mechanic is you can clone yourself up to four or five times. Five times. And so then you can have five bodies running around. Just should we pause while the train goes by? I think it should be okay. I it's think it's gone. already it's gone. It was picking up a little bit. It's not moving. It should be okay. So you can swap yourself, um, and that's basically where the puzzle elements come in. So you you get a, a few restrictions, but basically what'll happen is you get the, you're, you're you're collecting these orbs, um, and there are various barriers, and it ends up being a very like like surprisingly like difficult but not unreasonably so like the puzzles are really clever they they're great at like pushing the limit of okay it's not immediately obvious but i've never been so stuck that i was super frustrated at the same time and i've always felt like i earned something when i solved those puzzles so they're really really well done puzzles um i think i think they're complex enough where it's difficult to think about it where you can't just sit there and think it through beforehand and you have to try a couple times before you can understand fully what's going on with the mechanics and yeah. that you have to move around. If you sit there and try to think and play everything up beforehand, you're, you're not going to be successful. Yeah. It's just no, pro- you it's really probably going to make things more difficult. There's too many like steps forward. Because yeah. you'll have to, like, you'll clone a guy up on a cliff, and then you both have to run to the left, and then, like... He falls off. And then, like, he falls off. Right. Yeah, you've just got, like, there's just... You, have to, you end up creating these weird chains of events. So that's really great but then there's like a whole other layer that I think really makes the game like takes the game from good to great which is there's this like very implied like existential undertone I guess of who am I and what makes me me right because you're basically you're swapping between these guys and you just just you'll you kill them all the time. Yeah, and they all die. Like sometimes you just kill them to get where you're going, you know. So you'll swap through like three guys, and then like the last two, like you'll you can like 
because when you go to swap, the game basically stops. It doesn't completely stop, but it slows down so much it's effectively stopping. So you can just like zip around wherever you want. Like right. you clone a guy out in front of you, trade places, and you can just do that through space yeah. as much as you want, really. And um, so sometimes that just means like you're going across a huge gap and you just kill like four guys swapping your way across. Right. <laughs> and um, you can keep pulling up more as the other guys die. So yeah, you drop or right. die, and then you can pop up a new yeah, one. Exactly, do five at a yeah. time. And so, like, if there's a giant cliff, you can like jump out over the void and just like keep swapping guys out in front of you to like. Yeah. Or you can again. swap all the way down, so there's no fall damage. Right. So you just clone a guy below and you, you swap, and you just keep doing that. And then when you get to the bottom, the guy you clone just above the ground. When you swap in, then you just fall a foot right, and you land on the and ground. And everybody else collapses yeah. around you in a pile, <laughs> and then you just <laughs> rains bodies on you. It's, yeah, definitely. It, it's an interesting mechanic, and they tied into the story real well. The story is about a lot about that too. Yeah. yeah, the story is like entirely about the gameplay mechanic. Yeah, and about consciousness and you know the soul and what we are, things like that. And and they do it in a couple of different ways. Not only through the the swapper mechanic, but through these rocks that talk. Yeah, that in the ship. I don't think those rocks are. I, those haven't really been explained to me yet. I think I think the rocks' purpose is to to give you some insight as to what the hell's going on here, because they speak to you and. Um, like poems, right? Yeah. In a certain way. And they kind of give you information as to like, you know, they want you to think about a certain thing. They want you to think about, you know, am I actually, you know, dying or am I trading places in the body? Is that still me? And all all the things the rocks say, um, <laughs> you know, kind of keep pushing you into that um, range of thought. They're like, hey, keep thinking about this. And they say some really interesting things sometimes. The rocks. The rocks. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, and they really yeah. just, yeah. And you never have, to, what's cool about it too is like the way the mechanic works is you just walk in front of them and text pops up on top of the screen. Yeah. As if you're just kind of hearing them as you pass by them. You never yeah. have to sit there, hit A, or you like hang around. Like, no. Yeah, and that's almost never, sometimes it gets in the way and like I've had that kind of be a nuisance, but generally it's. You didn't like the rocks? No, I like the rocks, but I mean, sometimes I, I would try to be like be looking at something or get sort of angling myself and there would be a rock there and the overlay would come up and I couldn't see what was behind it. Like I'm trying to look up at a ledge or something. Right? Really? So the guys, yeah, it only happened a couple of times. So, um, but it was pretty good about that overall. Um, so it sounds like the prestige in space, but trying, prestige. trying to get through that kind of stuff. <laughs> was that the Christian Bale movie? I think, he, I think he was in it, yeah. Yeah. With Wolverine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, I guess it was kind of it was kind of like that. I thought it, yeah. In some ways. I thought it was a. Um, I wish you guys had played Soma, or like knew a little bit more about that because, I think it really. Discussing those games against each other, I think, would be super interesting because Soma's. Soma's about this. They're they're basically about the same thing, and I think. Uh, they just are completely different games but kind of hit at the same idea in really, really well done ways. And um, so, I don't know. I just I would just encourage anybody to sort of look at these, consider these games together. And, I don't know what that game is. <laughs> um, it's a survival horror game that was made by the same guys that made Amnesia. Uh, but it's all about, like, AI and AI sentience and... It's again like existential. Who am I? Where am I? Sort of in space and time kind of stuff. Um, like, like I would like it's a horror game, but the horror really comes from the ideas they suggest. Yeah. And but I wouldn't say I don't know. I wouldn't say the Swapper is an outright horror game. I guess it could be considered slightly. I don't. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's a horror game. I, but I think it's interesting in in the way that it. It proposes those ideas without trying to take itself way too seriously. You know, it just proposes the ideas and leaves you with that to think about rather than, like, crafting this overly dramatic, epic story around it. Yeah, like, you just sort of, like... I find myself, when I'm thinking about, I guess, the, um, you know, the deep questions and thoughts that the, the game gives you those more come to me when I'm just solving a puzzle and just kind of fucking around 
and I'm switching between guys and I'll start thinking like just about you know I guess the questions the game raises more so than like it's not in a cut scene or it's not necessarily barked at me by a character but the characters do sort of talk about it but I think I think it's interesting what the rocks propose because it makes you think about those ideas within the game's world not necessarily your own but you're thinking about it like wait I'm transferring right. characters right so the rocks aren't basically saying this is what it is but no. the rocks prime no. you to so I mean right. if they weren't in the game and you're doing the stuff it might be lost on some people that you're like dropping bodies everywhere Right. Whereas, like, they prime your thoughts to be like, hey, maybe you should actually think about what the hell you're doing for a second. Right. And it doesn't get in your way or stop you, but it, it plants that seed in your brain so that when you are solving a puzzle and dropping bodies from the sky, you might start thinking about, like, what the hell am I actually doing? And, and you totally do. You think about it. Yeah, you do. Very much unlike how you think about stomping on Goomba's heads. <laughs> like, you just never give it, a, give it a thought, right? Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, I feel like that game didn't necessarily need all that to be a strong game, so yeah. which just makes it more impressive to me that they went that yeah. far. And it's that... It's just very tastefully done, I guess, yeah. I would say. It, it feels complete. It fe- it's fulfilling, mm-hmm. um, especially when you finish it. It feels like a complete package, in which you guys should finish it, because <laughs> the ending is interesting. Um, I will. I yep. think I'm close. I'm definitely. I own the game. I will play it at some point, and especially having conversations like this definitely makes me want to go back and, and jump in deeper to like kind of play around with some of the. I know we didn't get too deep into the actual mechanics and how the puzzles work and whatnot, but I, I'm interested to see how they laid it out. But I'm getting the impression that as not like a giant project, it kind of it came to say and do something, and it does it, and then it ends. Like, yeah. And then it gets out of your way. Like, then yeah. it's, not, it's not like I'm just going to keep adding levels because no. I have a mechanic yeah, that, that I want to keep doing. Right. That's exactly... That, I feel like there's no filler in that game at all. Like, I never felt like I was... No. Anything was being stretched. Every puzzle feels very different yeah. and very unique um, and challenging in its own right. It never feels like, oh, I just did this pu- fucking puzzle. Like, <laughs> yeah. i got to do it again. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was the thing that like Braid did well, where it was kind of like yeah. each thing was a new concept, and sometimes you almost wish like, oh, I wish there was more of that, but then it's like, no, that's what you. That's get. all you need. I came, yeah. I played, you played with the concept. Move on. Do nothing, else. nothing overstays its welcome. Right. You never get sick of anything. But the the swap, the point of it is to just collect an orb, which is totally just kind of like a MacGuffin. Like there's, right. there's actually no purpose. The arbitrary. To the orbs. Yeah, oh. it, no, the orbs arbitrary. Are, are like to us usually to us, they're, they're like pieces to a, a portal. Usually, it's, it's so, like it's to open stuff. Yeah, it's, it's key, like there's, there's lock like, and key mechanic. A series of hub worlds is the way I yeah. was understanding it to it's, be. It's the flag. Yeah, it it's, really. It's is, just yeah. a checkpoint to get to yeah. in order to complete the puzzle. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a good kind of coverage of kind of what the swapper kind of brought to the table for your guys' minds as far as like how it would kind of spur your thoughts into yeah. like what you would want to do with something similar and like what it did well. So I guess. Let's move on to another one that we wanted to talk about, which was Thomas Was Alone. Uh, I think... I've never cared about blocks so much. (laughs) Tell me about this block. Let me know more. Not since Legos. (laughs) I never played with Legos. I don't know. So tell so tell us about Thomas was alone. Give us set set the scene. What what, what is this? You two never played it, right? Yeah. What I I know about it. I know. I yeah. Know about, I about what's going on. It's narrated by a British man. I know. But it's about. He plays a block. It's not even a block. It's just it's a rectangle. <laughs> block is three D. Well, rectangles different. are not. Right. It's just gonna have two. Oh, I see. It's only got two. Okay. He plays a rectangle and it's a platformer, but he ties in a narrative as to why these rectangles are jumping around and exploring and he ties it exactly in with the mechanics and it makes he gives a narrative to each one of the mechanics and he builds it up as you go along he adds more mechanics adds more narrative to why they're doing things and also confronts the idea of you know why is the, the rectangle or you even doing this and he's like I don't know I just it's my, it's my intuition it's my gut feeling and so I think what he does is he um, he tackles a lot of ideas as to why we play games. And I, I actually don't think most of it is because of narrative reasons. I think it's just intuition. It's like, I see that ledge over there. I want to jump on it, right? If you have the ability to jump. Yeah. And so he integrates that kind of stuff with the mechanics of the game, which makes it so interesting. Um, 
So you're a block. What can what can you do? What's is, is you can Thomas jump. is Thomas the main character block? Kinda. I, I'd say Thomas is the main character. There's a lot of other characters you end up playing. Sounds like there's a lot. So like, yeah. so explain a little bit about each, what they can and can't do. Each block has different properties. Some of them, um, like Thomas is like your all around block, right? He, he's got a good jump. He can move at a decent speed. That's really about it. That's, that's like the mechanics, like, right? Shoot or no, there's no shooting, nothing like that. Do you um, have little block hands? Nope, no block hands. He's just he's just a rectangle. Just one block. Okay. Um, some of the other characters jump really high, but they're they're different in shape. You know, they're taller. Um, another one moves slow, and he's got a super short hop. Um, other ones are big, and they can, can you tell by looking at them? Like, do they, yeah, do yeah. So I think there's like a total of like seven or eight, and each one of them is different, and unique. You know, they're either small, big, tall, wide. Something and I would like assume that. like, I would assume this game is entirely built upon motion. And I guess silhouettes. What do you mean, like silhouettes? Silhouettes, like any silhouettes isn't a great word for blocks. I mean, they're just squares. But like yeah. in a more complex model, it would be the outline. Like if you just make it flat black, and then you can recognize it by the outline, and that kind of that lets you know who it is. Like in yeah, Do- yeah, in, you could certainly do in that Dota, too. like You're every character has to colors. boil down. Yeah, it's right. like this the, flat. The cut colors out. just make it easier. Right. Yeah. So the way you you control all the blocks in like the same level, right? Eventually, you get a bunch of blocks, and you have to move them all through the level to reach the checkpoint. But you have to make them work together in certain ways. Um, so you have to have some blocks ride different blocks. Maybe have like the John the tall rectangle who can jump really high and far um, jump up somewhere to hit a switch which opens a door things like that do you control them directly yeah okay. you say so you control all of them only one at a time so you have to switch between them so it's like you have to make them ride each other things like that uh, make staircases out of each other and hop on <laughs> top of uh, one another so it becomes interesting because as you're doing this he's just making up this story that goes with these rectangles and what they're doing and it ties in exactly what you're doing with them yeah and you get really attached to it <laughs> and then it's like all of a sudden like i actually kind of almost got sick of playing a little bit and i just wanted to know what was going to happen next so that's why i kept playing yeah like, i just want to know what the hell happens yeah man i'm really invested in that yellow square man john <laughs> <laughs> is that john john yellow square john's a tall yellow rectangle who can jump super high Really invested in his storyline. I need to know what happens to that yellow square. You do. You got to know what happens to him. It's pretty amazing. It, it is pretty interesting in the sense that there's some old school artwork, um, some of like the first things kind of ever animated, like actual like pictures photographed and then made like into like a movie. So yeah. like the first like moving images, so to speak, where artists took basically minimalist things like that, like blocks, rectangles, and triangles and put them on a screen and kind of move them around and had them chase them each other around and like go inside a rectangle and then the other one's trying to get in or whatever. Yeah. But trying to get in is the wrong word for it because really they were just like moving these shapes around and their whole point was that if you do this enough, humans are hardwired for pattern recognition. So mm-hmm. people start to ascribe a story to it. Yeah. Right. And so they kind of had this, you know, they're, they're great to look up sometimes on YouTube or just like trying to get an idea of like what they did. It's kind of wild where it's like just like a big block and a couple little blocks and the big block is chasing the little blocks and right. very yeah, quickly people are kind of be that, like, yeah. oh crap, the big one's trying to get the little ones and the other ones right. are running away and they're like, they're scared or whatever and they're trying to get in the house or something and it's like really at the end of the day it's just shapes moving around but right. like kind of arbitrarily really. There's no really like intent behind it other than like just seeing yeah. what people ascribe to it and um it sounds like they kind of did the same thing in video game form with this one, where it's right. kind of like super minimalist, kind of like. But then, but then, instead of letting the people just come up with their own story and like ascribing to it, he kind of came up with yeah. a story that he was he ascribed to what he was doing with the mechanics he built in the level, and kind of basically laid that out for you, being like, when I made this character be able to jump high or be buoyant, I think I've seen some float in yeah. the water or whatever. Yeah, one like they'd be like, you know, this is what I was thinking, and I started kind of like. A, putting anthropomorphizing these geometric shapes and giving them personalities whereas you know just left right. to our own devices you come up with any possible reason I, I think the, or maybe not do that at all and just say the game right. is nothing like would, would, do you think the game would work without the I, voice I think I think why you didn't do that is because that already exists right you have I think you have both those realms already existing where you have 
narr- strong narrative and story and characters that we can all relate to. And then we have games that are just about purely the mechanics and moving pixels or you know rectangles, things like, like that around. He took that idea and mixed it too. He's like, well, what if we just took the story and the mechanics and only use those, but didn't give those representational Yeah, and if I had to guess, spaces. it looks like it was the game was like an experiment almost. Like, pro, like it looks it looks like maybe it was born out of a, a really distilled prototype uh, where, yeah. Or he's just a coder who has no art. An artist or, I think that was maybe one of the things. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he, he knew how to do any art. And so I think he's like, well, I'm just going to go with this. Yeah. And maybe that's where the idea derived from was his limitations. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah, I definitely like to play that. Um, I've I've heard from a lot of sort of credible sources that it's a really good game. Yeah, it, it gets a bit lengthy um, towards the end. Feels like there are too many character stacking staircase puzzles. <laughs> it's just like oh god, we need to jump on each other to get up there type yeah. puzzles. Yeah, and I, I do know he did go back in the game and remove a bunch of them. He tried <laughs> to get rid of like as many as he could, but still, like there's. There's probably still too many. It does get tedious at points. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a really cool narrative, too. I mean, that's an interesting kind of just design challenge and then, like, how many different interactions can you actually come up with with, like, just a set of blocks, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day. I mean, yeah. Like, even could... limiting yourself to not having, like, rounded shapes and stuff kind of, like, cuts off a lot of potential yeah. avenues of play just right there. So I would imagine that like the stacking stacking your characters to get up there is like the easiest thing <laughs> to like go with, and then everything else is kind of like a challenge to actually right. come up with something interesting that's still doable. It's it's weird how you start to like playing as certain blocks and not playing as other <laughs> blocks, even though like every the puzzles are built around for that block, so it doesn't really matter which block you play as, right? Like everything can be accomplished with that block. And so, like, you start to, like, dislike playing as, you know, just like, one small guy who's just, like, a little block. Yeah. And, like, the narrator makes him sound like he's angry, and he immediately doesn't like, like, John and Thomas. Yeah. And it's like, then you don't like him? <laughs> You're like, oh, this guy's a little asshole. Like, I don't want to play as him. He sucks. That's awesome. He can't jump anywhere. That's great. But it's like, but all the mechanics are still built for him. And so, it's interesting how you start to dislike him, even though... Like, you're essentially doing the same thing and like the other ones. you know, a small, give, making him a small red block, I think, actually gives him a surprising amount of depth because, you know, red Did implies... Did you say he was red? Yeah, Thomas is red. No, the... No, the, the little guy? He, no, yeah. he's not. Oh, what is he? He's, he's not red. Small... I don't, I don't what color, color is he? He's looks like an orange Even still. Color, maybe? Um, I don't remember. Okay, well then maybe not so much the color, but small. I don't know. I don't... I feel like you can... A, you know, a strength... When you have something as abstracted as this, people can, like, kind of fill in the gaps, you know? Like, stuff you don't necessarily explain. Or people make sense of the world in a way that they understand it, and so your world can make more sense to everybody if you explain less or, you know, have little features. Like, him being a small guy, I'm like, oh, yeah, I know guys, short guys like that, you know, or something like that. Right. Um, And I think... That's what I think would be interesting if I played that game is is things like, like again, like I said earlier, like size and movement and how those create the world and the narrative and how you interpret things. Right. Yeah. He does turn that character around though. He does. He does. He does come play to love the him. characters. Yeah, you, you do come to like him. <laughs> um, Fights his inner demons. Eventually, and you, you do like playing as him because like. What he says about him is kind of funny. Yeah. He's always just like kind of complaining about shit. Does and it, like everybody's got a friend like that, right? Oh, yeah. it's like, it's, it's All right. So the last one that we had on our list here, which is completely opposite opposite end of the spectrum from what we were talking yeah, right? about before. Yeah. Because right. basically we threw in like a triple A because it was free online for a while back there. <laughs> and then I didn't um, play it. Yeah. Because um, I didn't download the, it. The latest I... incarnation of Tomb Raider. Um, where they basically completely rebooted the series and created a new character and a new setting Mm -hmm. and kind of started almost from scratch, so to speak. Um, But this one is about as far from from indie as you can get um, with the level of production quality and, you know, sheer number of people and workforce that worked on this game that, like, led to making it what it was. Um, So I guess... What to say about this new one? I mean, really, like, the thing that struck me out the gate and that would probably be the mo- the biggest thing that you see in the difference between the two to, like, literally the, ex- like the mere opposite of um, 
Thomas was alone, just anthropomorphizing shapes. Yeah. This game goes well above and beyond what I've seen in most other games as far as like its level of graphical fidelity and yeah. like how it presents the characters in and is in as real as possible mm-hmm. fashion using like the most modern technology where the animation quality is beyond almost anything I've seen in most I don't even know if I've seen a better animated game um, short of saying like you know horse animations in Red Dead or something like that like right. the way that she moves through the scenes and like reacts to very small like obstacles or imperfections there's there's very oddly shaped passages and certain things where she kind of like crouches down or leans up and over and like it's it's very fluid it's, there's no like there's eight animations in the game and they switch between them it's like it's very fluid and blended yeah, yeah they chain together seamless like you know there's it's i don't re- remember ever seeing any like goofy shit you know usually in a game like you can make your character just jump weird or something and i'm sure it's in there but i don't really remember it um Whereas I was watching Uncharted the other day, and like, you know, <laughs> Uncharted, like, because Uncharted is like very jumpy, grabby, like, you know, slide along ledges. There's it, the, the the engines are like the character, you know, the the engine's always looking for something to hook onto. So your animation has to be sort of like, I don't know, the jump style's weird. It, it just means like the it just ends up looking really dumb when you know Nathan Drake jumps forward, but like he flails like he's going off a cliff, you know. Tomb Raider's and, not like. Uncharted? Oh, it's just like Uncharted. Okay, yeah. so we'll, we'll do. I played all the Uncharted games. Yeah, it's a lot. I'll just like change it. Uncharted in my head to Tomb Raider. Just every time you want to say Uncharted, just yeah, say Tomb I'll think Tomb Raider. Instead yeah. of Nathan Drake, I'll say Lara. Yeah. That works. There you okay. go. Now I can partake. <laughs> no, you're an expert. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with the Uncharted stuff, but yeah, just the way that they kind of let her move very freely it brings life to the character without having to do voiceover or explanation stuff. There's lots Which of voiceover. Still do. There's lots of voiceover, lots of cinematics. The yeah. game's very... She, does she talk a lot in that game? She talks quite a bit, um, and people are always talking to her. Does that get annoying? Um, I always found it annoying in games when the, my main character is always talking. I mean, there's spots where she's not talking, where you're kind of like in the woods, like hunting deer and stuff, where she's kind of just out there by herself. But yeah. she... There's, you know, your standard Metal Gear style, like, she'll find, like, a radio, and then people will be yeah. like, oh, hey, like, and then they're chiming in on you every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, and she responds to them as opposed to just being a silent protagonist. I mean, they really, they went the complete opposite route of just, like, letting you fill in your own story, like, kind of somewhat like the swapper, or, like, kind of do a voiceover with, like, no graphics, like, Thomas yeah. was alone. They went the... You know, big budget AAA route of we're going to tell the story about this no. person and make you try to think that she is a real character because she's she looks real, she's animated mm-hmm. real, she has her own voice, her own personality, her own kind of opinions, the way that she reacts to situations with like shown emotions. Like her face is very animated, where like when she's scared or excited yeah. or whatever, yeah. like it's very you can you know she doesn't need to say anything. You can see it on her face because right. it's all represented on screen That's and awesome. kind of glorious bloomed 3D like you know it, using the kind of the best rendering tech you can get away with without making your game grind to a halt yeah um, so it's very much you know the blockbuster approach of, yeah of, you know we're gonna so no make, personal interpretation out of what's going on no well not necessarily I mean in this in as much as when you watch a movie you can interpret somebody's emotions by looking at their face you know yeah. like you don't she doesn't have to say like I'm scared now like you can see her and be yeah. like you know she's scared by the way she's moving right. because that's actually animated in the way she's like kind of creeping right. around now like when a certain scene happens she's not running the same way she was running in right. the last scene because the tone's different Mm-hmm. And they actually animate that, and you can kind of tell just by the way she moves through the scene. Is this a stealth section? Is this a section where you're mm-hmm. just blowing everything up? Because that's one thing that the game does have quite a bit, which I kind of felt was odd almost. Um, blowing stuff just up. Just knowing, like, the, having played the original Tomb Raiders from, like, PlayStation era, as much as the graphics kind of were laughable now... The game was really about exploration more than yeah. kind of anything. Like most of the tomb kind of running around was was kind of empty. Like it was really like there was jumping puzzles, there was puzzles to figure out. Was there was like very traps there was and, lots yeah, of traps, yeah. and very little gunplay. Yeah. Like she had double pistols and I always thought that was very cool, but I remember like me and my friends just like jumping around the rooms and doing like cool backflips and shooting the guns at nothing. 
because yeah. it's like I just want to see the guns being shot, but like there's yeah. there's very few like enemies you actually have to fight. Yeah, this like, is not really, bad. This is no, this is this falls into like the Gears of War, like uh, Resident Evil Four type, like over the shoulder, yeah. take cover, pop out, actually. blast yeah. things, you know, red exploding barrels everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, of course. Of course, they did. You know, the game, the gunplay is is pretty slick though. She's got a, a bow that you can upgrade. The, all the weapons are upgradable. She gets like a shotgun. She gets her pistol. They they toy. They really toy with the player of like the iconic double pistols, like for almost the entirety of the game. She gets a pistol very early on, but she doesn't get doubles. <laughs> and she's almost offered up like a second pistol like multiple times. And you're always waiting for her to just pick up the other one and be like, "Yeah, I got yeah, my that, iconic the call double, back like, moment. Yeah. My dual, my dual wielding pistols. It's finally happened, or whatever." And it's like it's like kind of like one of those things at the very end, like her friend, like he loses his gun in like a thing that happens in the story, and yeah. she and she like t- picks up his gun with her gun, and she's got like the double guns, and it's right. like, and it's, it's like right at the end, and it's like, and then she's like, uh, like oh shit, and, like the <laughs> double guns are out finally, like they really don't just jump right in there, like oh she's got double guns, or right in the beginning of the game she's just running around dual wielding on everybody, it's like yeah. it's a slow burn of you start, she starts with like almost no weaponry and gear, and they do a good job of kind of meeting it out like throughout yeah. the game of like now you get. A grappling hook thing. Now you have like an axe that you can like climb things and like open shit with. You Whatever, have torches. Yeah. You have, you get a bow that's like just like a wood and like a piece of twine that's like barely able to like kill deer. And throughout yeah. the game, she gets like a better. But then by the end of the game, she's got like some crazy compound Rambo bow with like yeah. exploding tips and yeah. stuff. And like you know, and then it's like yeah. But it's rare that in a game when I get my upgrades or I don't look forward so much. Like I'm like okay, well, I get the upgrades, so I'll upgrade my thing and whatever. That game. I was always, like, super stoked to get the upgrade, and that's really... I don't know what... I, I can't put my finger on what makes that difference, but... Um, I, I think when I the upgrade do. is meaningful. I feel yeah. like there's a lot of games where... You feel like you just have to do it to do it. Well, yeah, it, but, also it's like, like, but also it's like... You do it because that's what you do. Yeah. But it's also it's not immediately... It doesn't feel different, right? Like, so if you're playing, like, Diablo or... Destiny, even or like some of these games are like let's just point to like an MMO or like no a role changes. playing game. It's like yeah, you up your stats. Right. Like yeah. now you do two more damage. Well, what does that mean? Yeah. Like does the game play that much yeah, differently? It change, right? Your an- your attack animation is yeah. the same. The, the way that the characters react to you are generally the same unless you unlock completely yeah. new abilities. It seemed like the gun upgrades in this game were more like new abilities. Really, like when you had a new barrel on your shotgun, it's shockingly more effective than it was without it yeah or like when you get fire arrows before like you oh, yeah. didn't have them before now it's like literally that's like a new ability like you can now set enemies cover on fire like if they're like just tucked behind so it significantly changes the gameplay right so the upgrades are meaningful kind of like cool. the zelda well, style of yeah, it yeah, significantly exactly. changes but it it adds. It definitely makes a right. difference. It, you can feel it immediately. Yeah. It doesn't mean like the shotgun is well, not like I, I think a new shotgun. I know, think that's like, pretty yeah. significant if it changes the way you play things now. It does it over. It yeah. It's not. Don't confuse not every it. Step. Don't confuse it with getting a different gun every time. Right, it's yeah. like I felt like every time I saw the upgrade go in. It made a meaningful difference. It wasn't like, oh, I do a little bit more damage. No, it was yeah, like really I had used to have to shoot somebody three times with my gun. Now I only have to shoot them once. Yeah, like that's a yeah. even though the gun doesn't look completely different, and the game is completely not. It changes. It made a meaningful difference to invest stuff into that weapon to make yeah. it like that. Or now it has like twice the capacity. Now I have to reload half the time that I used to spend reloading. Like, yeah. um, it makes a meaningful gameplay change. I mean, it doesn't turn the whole game on its head like oh now my gun's OP and everybody dies in one hit like immediately (laughs) but you know the one thing I will say is that game could have been more difficult it was a little too easy but I I played through it I think those games kind of have to be I feel like they fell into the content trap like we were kind of talking about how it's so finely rendered and animated and scripted and there's cinematics and the whole thing you know you know the Miyamoto approach of like they want everybody. They want everybody to experience all the content that they've created. They don't yeah. want to make like this amazing cutscene that's the end of the game that only two percent of the players are going to get to because the game's so hard. Yeah. Right. Also, I don't think difficulty is what those kind of games are about. I think it's about experiencing. the Yeah, no, it's more about the adventure and the right. action and the, yeah. They're, um, they're played, trying to be more. I played though. Uncharted on like the the hardest difficulties, all of them, and it sucked. Oh, it wasn't any fun are, because like it was just no, yeah, it just got annoying. They're frustrating. Yeah, like all right, I know what to do. I 
The only difference you have to do is basically just sit behind cover longer and more often. And those games will, and, and like Uncharted will throw waves of guys at you for so oh, yeah. ever. But Tomb Raider forever. never does that. That game is actually really dense moment to moment um, in a way that Uncharted isn't yeah. to me. It does seem like when you're in a fight in that game, like you know you're in a fight and there's like X number of enemies that are yeah. involved in the fight and yeah. when the last yeah. one's down, it's over. And they don't yeah. keep running out of caves. There's, there's the moments in Uncharted you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, is this shit going to stop like, like you're fighting through? Uncharted, honestly, I there was so, it, it, when I at least when I first started and, and, and probably a couple times throughout the game, I was wondering... Am I supposed to be hitting a button or something? Like, because these guys oh, yeah, are I totally just wanted keep the same thing. Yeah, literally, that's what yeah. Call of Duty did. It was like the old, some of the old Call of Duties, and they've gone back and forth on this, and they've not, now they're to the point where people are onto them where they can't get away with it so much anymore. But it's kind of like if you go back to like Modern Warfare, their enemies will spawn forever. <laughs> at certain points in the game. I they will that. spawn forever. You can clear an entire street, and if you don't cross a certain invisible tripwire, they, uh, they will it. keep spawning forever. And so the oh, game cool. eventually, like, you kind of eventually figure that out. And when you're playing on the hardest difficulty, it becomes, like, that's the difficult part. It's not so much taking the headshots and, like, getting the right cover and getting the line of sight on everybody. It's dropping enough guys so you can sprint you across that invisible tripwire so they can stop spawning. Yeah. Because otherwise, you'll stuck there forever. You're yeah. stuck there till you run out of ammo. And they just right. keep coming. It's kind of yeah. like so, Ninja Gaiden, the fucking bird. <laughs> yeah. In, any infinite spawning birds or Medusa heads. <laughs> or, <laughs> you know. That fucking nerd. I don't know. Anthony's playing Castlevania tomorrow during Extra Life. So uh -huh. that'll be fun. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, the invisible tripwire has always been my, one of my most hated mechanics. Because it changes the game. It's The game should be about running and gunning and yeah. and taking out the enemies. It, is, it becomes something different where it's like, it becomes a frustrating slog of, alright, what's the right number of enemies that I can take out and then sprint up the street and still survive just to cross that line. Arbitrary line that you don't even know when you crossed it. Right. You just know that it's there somewhere and you gotta yeah. sprint to a new place and try to take cover before you Everything die. Everything that's seen is now arbitrary. Cause why do they have an infinite amount of guys to throw at you? Yeah. And why is there an arbitrary line that stops them from coming at yeah. you? So it's just kind of stupid. And There's bad, a lot of reasons I can't mechanic. stand that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's because it's at a certain point it's no fun. It's just like, what the hell? I just killed all these guys. Yeah. When's anything gonna change? Yeah. Did I miss you know, something? Right. Like, do you know what the worst thing is though? Is that Uncharted? The way it'll it throws waves at you in the first one like that to like Anthony or I, I were saying like we were wondering if there were triggers. There's actually a point at the end where you do have to trigger something, but you think it's just Uncharted being Uncharted, <laughs> yeah. and you just have you just sit there just killing just tens of these like zombie things. The, and the then first one's pretty brutal. It's oh my god! It's just like yeah, the first one's rough. And that's the worst of like the game has set a certain expectation, and then they just change it without yeah. any messaging like, yeah. whatsoever like and it's not that the game has to come out and tell you what it's doing like because like, we're all kind of generally against that for whatever reason like we don't want that to just like hey yeah. now this is happening like, yeah you know but I hate, I but when the game that. sets a certain expectation it's like okay this is how this thing right. works you've been playing it for hours you understand the mechanics and, and what it's trying to accomplish and then it just silently changes the rules on you yeah without any type of notification that anything is different then that just that's a recipe for frustration. Yeah, like you're just you're going to frustrate. Your I wouldn't players. say, and I wouldn't say it completely does that, but it, it is a little bit of that for sure. Yeah, yeah. it gets that at moments. Yeah, it could be it could be aggravating. But yeah, they're I, still fun games. They're all right. I like them. They're all right. <laughs> the I second play, the second one's multiplayer is sweet. No, third, I never. I didn't even third think one was that. shit. <laughs> the second game's multiplayer was a lot like Halo. The way you had to control the map, and it was. It doesn't look like Halo, but no. it was. You had to control the power weapons on the map and yeah. move around. I um, hate that. I love that. That's what I'm all about. Man, I hate spawning weapons that just of mass destruction. The it's people the that you learn how to control them. Get Stop them sucking. <laughs> Get your fucking timer out. So that's what I'm trying not to do. I don't find that fun. I don't it find fun. timing that and controlling Dude, the map. All you gotta do and, just, is and becoming overpowered against my enemies. I want to I wanna kill Play them Store. because I'm, I shoot straighter than them and I get the yeah. drop on them, not because I have a weapon that's just massively stronger than theirs. 
That's your just your that's you just want a power fantasy. You're just like I just want to be stronger than anybody on the map. No, I, want, I don't want them to be able to kill me. If, I want them I want to be able yeah, to kill but, them with impunity. But and then they all die and I laugh and say ha. Ah. If it's available to everybody and that's what you want to go for. On but the it's map. not once people have memorized the map and you're that guy. Like it's not available to everybody. That's your fucking fault. It's just I've been on both sides of the equation. You know, I was that guy in Goldeneye where I knew where all the body armor was and where all the weapons were going to spawn, yeah. and I would run around the map just collecting it just so nobody else could get it. Right, but it makes and it you, more. Just dominate. Well, it makes it more interesting when both parties have the capability to do that or know when to do it. But the problem is, once somebody has it, they have the advantage to keep it, especially if you know how to do it. Like yes, if, you, you if, you're, if, you're, it. if you're in Goldie, Goldeneye, for example, you get the body armor first. If somebody else knows where the body armor is, is too, and you're both running for it, and you get it first, and you get in that one-on-one gunfight with them, yeah. 99 times out of 100, you're going to win that gunfight just sheerly by having double the amount of health that they do. Now they're spawning somewhere else on the map, and you've got a better chance of getting the body armor again. And so basically you're setting yourself... Well, it depends setting, how fast it's You're spawns, setting yourself right? above everybody else in the game by virtue of knowing the map and controlling these right, overpowered to constantly weapons. Keep, the game needs a balance where you can overcome that in certain ways. Um, so if it, as long as there's a balance where things are spaced out evenly, right, and if the good balance, timing, but it if, makes it way a certain more point. If the balance is strong enough, then the po- overpowered weapons aren't overpowered anymore, and then the game becomes, in my opinion, not needing to have weapons spawn at all. Let's just have let everybody pick their weapons because yeah, yeah, they're all then, balanced. Yeah, but then that's boring because if everybody's spawning with the same thing, now it's just a bunch of schmucks running around a map aimlessly with no real. Control point, right? It doesn't that's, get people to move around. Well, that's where that game, encourages camping. That's people where game modes sitting come in from. Fucking corners. I disagree. I think that's where game modes. But come then, like, from. what if you people just camp to do those Slayer? people camp those spaces where those guns come out? Like, what if that, you just want to do Slayer? Then why would anybody move to kill other people? Yeah, that's why people play deathmatch. And, and, and then when those yeah, people get the lead, and then when those people get the lead, what do they do? Why would where are they going to go out and risk risk turning their backs down the hallway? You're just gonna get shot in the back, right? So you just camp in a corner or in a safe zone with your entire team. Well, you're playing it Halo. doesn't work. Gen- generally speaking, those people that camp, like those, that stuff is kind of like a thing of the past, really. No, like they, it's the, not. The the maps, totally works. The maps are it's built, not a thing of the past. They're, but they're not gonna be the top guy on the team, just by virtue of there's the maps are big enough. There's so much other action going on. If you're playing deathmatch and you want to be number one on the team, your kill death ratio might be great. You might go ten and zero, but there's gonna be other people in the game that go thirty three and ten or like. 46 and 9. No, no, but because if, if they're you're engaging in the stuff that you're winning. You're going to play it the smartest way possible, which is play super defensively and safe once you get the lead. And if there's no reason to move around the map other than to kill somebody, why are you going to go out and find them when they could be hiding around a corner? When you can just wait for them to come to you because you know they have to because they have to kill you before the time runs out, right? They have to gain the lead. So now we're talking about shooters. <laughs> yeah, we got really <laughs> off the rails on that one. Well, I mean, we're, we pretty much just reached four thirty, um, so I guess hour. we can we can we can wrap her up now. We're just under an hour, but we I think Greg's got a heart out here shortly. Yeah, I gotta get going. But oh, fucking Greg, Jesus. <laughs> but good good stuff. Um, definitely a lot of interesting discussion around some of our feelings about certain things. Um, I definitely want to go play the Swapper, and Thomas was alone now. Mm-hmm. Um, any closing comments as we wrap this up? No. Um, what are we going to talk about next time? Probably play some games. I'm kind of stuck in Halo 5, but maybe I'll get off of it. We talk about Ori. You guys want to play that? You're just going to be stuck in Halo 5, just yeah. camping those power weapons. Halo 5 just trying to get, trying to get advantage on everybody. Cruising in my hog. <laughs> <laughs> Cruising in his hog, and Greg will be in Canada, and we've got our, we're going to play some games tonight here in the space, arcade night Let's tomorrow. Talk about samurai gun. Tomorrow we got extra uh, extra life, so we're going to be raising money for women and children's hospital by playing video games, which is a cool concept. Um, Do you have a stream for that? There's multiple streams that are being set up. I think I hear some people outside talking right now. Yes, um, there's people outside. Setting up. Um, there'll be multiple streams set up, so links will be going out on all the social media platforms throw a couple bucks to help Women and Children's Hospital and check out what's going on in space. When you're drinking your morning coffee, sign on Twitch and see what's up. All right, I think that wraps it up for the first uh, weekly podcast out of the space here. Sounds good. Thank uh, our guests, Greg Giles and Anthony Pismaroff, and uh, we'll catch you guys again next week.